Sunday shows. All right, here we go, chat. This is what I was talking about, chat. Like I said, y'all know I am a Marvel fan. They're combing the streets. Searching house to house. If they arrest you two, they will take you to their headquarters, and you will not return. I'm more concerned with a six-foot cat man who's got claws that can cut through vibranium alloy. Go! By my count, that makes two super soldiers loose in Paris. Three. Counting you. And that's two too many. I'll be there before the sun rises. Before the Germans, before that American. The Eye of Force has been found. I drew. Please, just stick to the rooftops. Be careful, stand me. When am I not? It's better if I tackle this one alone. You may. Encounter some obstacles. That won't be a problem. Oh, Our cat friend is definitely here, too. By the look of things, he's not very far ahead. The American boy is right on your heels. Oh, Who the hell are you? If you wanted us dead, we'd be dead. So what do you want? Answers. Oh, this tough. That's far enough! Stay out of my way! Stay Aside. I do not take orders from anyone. I don't have time for this. Neither do I. Oh. Marvel 1943. Surprise of Hydra. Uh, okay. This is my only thing is, hopefully we'd be able to play with both characters instead of just one, like choosing, a, picking a side from Wakanda or from America, as you can see. Hopefully we get to play with both characters, or even, even if you could just do a story mode with just one character and then be able to play with the other character also. That'll be tough. That'll be tough. It's a way big difference from... You know, a Spider-Man game or a Hulk, or I'm gonna just say a Spider-Man game because that's what we got at the moment was you know a Samiac Spider-Man game. It's a real big difference from the Samiac Spider-Man game due to the simple fact, um, like there are two different characters who have two different fighting styles. Like you know what I'm saying? Like one of them is Black Panther, one of them is Captain America. Two different heroes, two different stories, two different backgrounds, two different places, two different races, like. Everything is different, like you know what I'm saying. So that's a big, big change, big difference. Um, w though, if I had to rate it, man, I would give it a, you know, I give it an eight. Like for every every game, superhero game that come out, bro, I always say it's always about the, especially when it comes to multiplayer. Story is cool. If the story is good, that's cool. I'm more of a multiplayer type of guy. Like I say, with all my superhero games that come out or that's coming out, I say. Long as there are multiple characters, multiple playable characters that you can play with, maybe add like another like Winter Soldier on the side with, you know, um Captain America or add like maybe like Shuri, how she is now in a Black Panther suit or, you know, some type of character or a Killmonger, which is like another superhero, maybe him with Black Panther powers. That'll be tough. Multiple playable characters. So hopefully that this is what they bring it to this game. Um, looks dope. Hopefully, have a multiplayer. Um, where there are more characters because the graphics is for sure tough. Um, the movement looking kind of good. It looks, you know, pretty decent. You know, on um, the fighting looks pretty nice. Um, but we'll see, man. Twenty twenty five after GTA five. Um, we'll see, man. Look, we are so excited to finally show what we've been working on at Skydance New Media. Um, and I just got to say, I am so proud of what the team has accomplished. My God. It's right? incredible. Right. Um, Amy, I'm yeah. sure the audience is wanting to know more about your game sure. and the team. Can you tell us about it? Sure. Well, I, as the trailer hopefully illustrates, uh, we are right. creating a story-driven World War II-era Marvel action-adventure game 
with an ensemble of playable heroes. But here's what's important to note. People might not think this. This isn't some custom demo that we made just for this show. That's our game. That is your right? game. Right? All the sequences you just saw in that trailer are all pulled right out of our game, running real time in Unreal Engine 5, no smoke and mirrors. Yeah. <laughs> I'd expect nothing less from your team. It's been absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, as with many of your past projects, you're really bridging the gap between films and games, but this is a whole new level. What's different nowadays compared to the old days? Yeah. Well, look, I mean, you and I have known each other for what, over a decade over now? Over a decade, yeah. Right. And we immediately hit it off, and I think it's because we've been chasing the same dream, right? Yes. Which is to create richly interactive experiences that are cinematic, immersive, but, and, and make you feel like you're in a movie, right. but with all the player agency that you expect from a really great game, right? Absolutely. And in the past, this has always felt like it was just beyond our grasp. But I think we're finally crossing that threshold. Yeah, we're trying our best. Yes, we're trying our best, yeah. And look, when we're telling a character-driven story, it's critical for us to be able to really faithfully capture and honor every nuance of our actors' stellar performances. So we've been incredibly grateful to be able to partner closely with our friends on the MetaHuman team to tell our story. Tell us a little bit about the visuals in the game. Well, again, thanks to Epic and the Unreal Engine development team, we've been able to leverage some of the new Nanite and Lumen features being released in the 5.4. And honestly, this is really helping our, our team to achieve a level of visual fidelity that enables us to present this authentically grounded Marvel universe. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go a little bit deeper and see some of these features that the team has used by firing up a level in the game. So, let's, uh, let's <laughs> so, do that. Sounds good. Okay. First, I'd like to introduce two of my colleagues. Colin Hennen, our cinematic animation director. Yay! And Roman Adiola, our director of photography. So Colin will be live and editor, and Roman will be on the virtual camera, just like he is at all of our performance capture shoots. So, if you all are ready, let's switch the feed and go back to that bridge environment. And let's see, yep, you're live, good, okay. So Colin, let's boom down and take a closer look at this environment. So to create a really immersive game experience, the characters and environments have to work together harmoniously. We can't just drop believable characters into a less than convincing world. So we need to oh, start with authentic tough, chat. and densely detailed environments as the setting to our story. Right, I'm, I'm accepting that Because I'm, part I'm of our story is set in 1940s occupied Paris we needed the word world to have a really believable and visceral level of detail and grit, as you can see here. So, Roman, why don't we focus on the ground here for a bit? Now look at that. That's an amazing amount of detail. It would have been nearly impossible to get something this complex to run in real time without the new features in 5.4. So, mm. Kim, let's talk about some of the levels of detail that we're seeing here. Sure. So, we're talking about Nanite's new adaptive tessellation feature. So, whilst Nanite lets you create environments like you're seeing here of incredible detail, the memory requirements can become impractical to realize for such a level of complexity across a huge level without the need for lots of instancing. And we thought that was a challenge and we wanted to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, Colin, let's actually strip this scene right down to the dirt so folks can see what we're talking about. So, see how simple, this is relatively simple ground plane. Actually, let's, um, let's show the triangle so you can actually see what's there. Just a few hundred triangles. Let's pop it back to the beauty render view. Um, but with this new dynamic tessellation capability, we can actually displace that simple geometry and create new three-dimensional geometry of the quality that you're used to with Nanite. With nothing more than layering tile textures and using shader logic, you can make incredibly complex effects. So instead of me trying to explain it, <laughs> let's get Colin to show the magic, and uh, let's see a transformation of this face. This technique allows you to see an unprecedented level of geometric detail, but it's also memory efficient and can be changed dynamically in the runtime of your game. So things like footprints or tire tracks or even supernatural effects, <laughs> if you such want, some would want them, can be visualized. And just to show how this ge simple geometry has now been transformed, let's have a look at the triangle view again. There you go. What you expect from Nanite. So it's a really, really smart, interesting technique to actually get details in the, into the games without crazy, crazy amounts of geometry. 
I'm going to switch it back to the uh, detail view. Thank you. Um, and of course, as you can imagine, this technology isn't just useful for the ground and for the ground terrain. It applies to every detail in the environment. So let's fly over to that pile of objects on the left over there, for example. And Colin, while we do, can you kill those headlights for me? Cool. Thank, thank you. Okay, That's so up. imagine our challenge. We're trying to authentically recreate a harsh winter in occupied Paris. That means every prop, every object, every detail, every rooftop needs to be realistically blanketed in snow. So now let's show how we can dial up the snow accumulation on these objects, right? And of course we can dial it back as desired. It's making me feel chilly actually. Yeah, actually it's a little cold up here. Maybe she's um, uh, <laughs> and remember, of course, like Kim said, thanks to this technology, this is all actual geometry. So you can see how tools like these would really empower even a small team to art direct and set dress their environments dynamically. It enables our artists to create a series of layers in the environment and then build up the complexity layer by layer by layer. Now, speaking of set dressing, let's go check out that fire barrel over by the watchtower we saw earlier. Yeah, that's the one there. And let's turn on a light to really illuminate the smoke coming out of the barrel. Thank you. Look at that. That's amazing. We could have never achieved effects this realistic in the past. Damn, so this is what we call a heterogeneous volumes. In the past, effects like these would be done with particle sprites, but that's kind of a cheat that often breaks down and can look flat. So you think you know which? Look kind of tough, really? First up, we've got. It's nice from afar, but far from nice, as we say back in the UK. <laughs> um, so if we look at the glow in, of the fire on, as it dynamically illuminates the volumetric smoke, you can see that that light transmitting through the volume. You can also see that the smoke itself is casting shadows onto the world, but also itself. These volumetrics can also mix with more traditional effects as well. So if you do want to put particles in there, fog, or even cards, you can do it. It all works in a, in a unified way. You can run the simulation, the, the smoke simulation, in Unreal Engine natively. Yeah, 2025 you want, gonna be or crazy, you can bro. import open VDB data sets as sparse volume textures, resulting in film quality visual effects, volumetric visual effects, all 2025 game is going to be crazy, total, are totally responsible to di responsive to dynamic lighting. Yeah, and it, it, it just looks incredible. Now, uh, of course, all of this is just to help us tell our story, right? And the story is nothing without great characters. So let's head back over to the bridge and catch up with Cap. Oh, God. Now, an essential part of any character's persona, oh, particularly a Marvel tough. hero, is their look. And it can be really distracting if the outfit doesn't look as realistic and believable as the rest of the world. As you can see, Cap's leather uniform fits just like you would expect in real life with all the correct material properties and the complexity of creases forming as he moves. From a technical perspective, this is where we can effectively utilize machine learning. We can set up and run complex simulations in a package like Houdini and import that data into UE. We then use this to train an ML model producing film quality deformations that run in real time. But none of this matters without great facial performances. So let's bring Azuri, T'Challa's grandfather, and our Black Panther. Now he looked like into John. He looked like uh, with his John ball. Walker, the but Captain America from uh, Winter Soldier show. Captain America's hero, dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. All right, and as he pauses here, Roman, why don't you go in really close and really show everybody the detail that we have in these models. Um, it's, it's insane, right? It's like, amazing. Uh, it's essential for us to retain every nuance of the outstanding performance that our actor, Kari Payton, brought to Azuri's character. What you just saw there were untouched metahuman animator solves. Mm -hmm. So working with the metahuman process, we've been able to honor our amazing actors' performances and faithfully transform them into equally powerful digital performances. Now, of course, it all starts with the actor's talent, and we're fortunate to have two of our cast with us in the audience today. So I'd like to introduce Drew Morline, who plays Captain America. <laughs> Kari Payton, our Black Panther. See, they hug, they're friends. They're not really fighting. It's all good. Um, 
And of course, I want to take this opportunity to thank them and the rest of our wonderful cast for going on this incredibly crazy journey with us. Uh, and now, as a special treat, uh, let's take a look at the entire bridge scene that you saw earlier. But this time, we'll keep Azuri's mask off to really showcase what we can do when all this incredible talent and all these amazing features come together. But remember, this is running entirely in real time. Awesome. Uh, oh, chat. Hold on, chat. That's far enough. I'm here on the business of the United States government. Yours is not the only business here. Stay out of my way. Stand aside. I do not take orders from anyone. Turn around, boy. Go home. Look, pal, I don't know who you are. But I know who you are, Captain. America's hero, dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. Says the man dressed like an overgrown house cat. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. I don't have time for this. Neither do I. <laughs> All in engine, and just to show there's no cheating going on. Hey, Colin, can you show the editor and the sequence of timelines? <laughs> right. So it really is running on real engine. We don't, we don't cheat. Yeah. So, absolutely incredible. I've never seen performances in a video game that are so believable. The storytelling, the action, I can't wait. It's gonna be yeah. so good to play. Anyway, Amy, Colin, Roman, thank you so much for showing your game. Thank you, thank you. I can't you. wait for it to ship. Yes, <laughs> okay, we better we'll get, get, on with get the back show. to work, right? Yeah, yeah back, right. To back to work, back to work. Guys, hey, chat. That's gonna be tough, chat. 